Manus was just mentioning some of the issues here South Africa is dealing with, high unemployment, power outages, a slow growth trajectory. When we talk about South Africa as an investment destination, how would you assess it? Is it still attractive for investors? Thanks. Morning, Jennifer. Yeah. I certainly think we know as a country we've got material challenges in the short to medium term and you know those are centered on infrastructure in general but within that energy and electricity and and logistics and also crime and corruption however if we are able to successfully deal with those and there are numerous plans underway and we're making progress I certainly see South Africa as a country of enormous potential we know it's a country that has some of the top 10 mineral deposits in in those minerals that are so necessary for growth around the world we're a large agricultural exporter we're a gateway to Africa we have world-class infrastructure in the form of lawyers, accountants, the financial services sector and the stock exchange. So while we certainly do have short term challenges, I'm extremely bullish about the long term potential of our country. How does the government then communicate that to investors? Because we know they're trying to get a two trillion rand, over two trillion rand investment. Um, how do you get over the hurdles uh, that you were just mentioning? What does the government need to say? I do think we need to be much clearer about the progress that we're making in some of these areas and in some the progress is actually quite fast so in the electricity environment in particular we know there are very strong pipelines currently in our business and across the country for private sector generation. It is going to take probably two to three years before that connects to the grid and fixes the problem. But we need to be much better at communicating milestones on our way to solving those three key problems of energy, electricity, logistics and transnet and crime and corruption. Do you think there are more milestones at this point in time or more headwinds that the government's going to communicate today? I think they're milestones, certainly on the energy side, small steps at the beginning, but they're certainly milestones. And we're hoping for for bigger milestones in the second two that are able to be communicated today, particularly around logistics and transnet and how we can work together to solve this problem that our country is facing. And we heard from South African Reserve Bank Governor yesterday. She spoke, he spoke with one of my colleagues and he was still very hawkish about rate hikes. I wonder from a bank's perspective, how, how does that affect the growth outlook here? Because if rate hikes are going to continue, uh, does that potentially get in the way of any sort of growth? We think that we've probably got another 25 basis point rate hike left in this cycle and then rates will have peaked and probably begin to move back down again during the course of next year and that's off an inflation outlook that we think will average five and a half percent this year with the last inflation print being at seven so you can definitely see that downward trajectory for inflation. I certainly believe that our growth headwinds in our country are much more to do with those three areas I spoke about than they are to do with the interest rate environment. And so then what else in addition to what the government's going to communicate today, what else needs to be, what, what does the private sector need to be doing at this point in time to support the, the public sector? I think it's all about working together. So if you take the energy environment in particular, there's an enormous amount that the private sector is doing to support the National Energy Crisis Committee. It's called NECOM. The private sector is helping to support that with project management skills, our ability to aggregate all of the projects that are actually underway in the country, our ability, to, for example, to report bottlenecks quickly, uh, and in so doing, help both the government and ESKIM ge enable energy generation to be connected to the grid as quickly as possible because that is the only long-term solution to the shortage that we currently have. Are you anticipating more global investment then to come as a result of, of this communication at this point in time? I think so. You know, while our country does have many challenges that I've just spoken about, yeah. in particular at the moment, energy generation and green energy generation is a long-term growth opportunity for investors and, and for our country. And I certainly think that that has attracted significant investment. So, for example, our business has a pipeline of more than 10 billion rand of lending to private companies that are in some stage of their own generation process and I would imagine you could multiply that by five or six across the entire economy. So that is a very large growth vector in an otherwise challenging growth environment. Yeah and I mean I, I think if you look at the government they really do have some challenges ahead of them. They've been doing a bit of flip-flopping when it comes to the messaging at, at this point in time. Um, do they, do you, are you hopeful, are you bullish about uh, them remaining consistent? 
I am hopeful. I do think that our messaging has been poor as a country and we can do much better at that. And, and hopefully you will see that emerge over time as we communicate more and more of the milestones that we're able to achieve on our two to three year journey to energy security. And so then let's just talk about small and medium enterprises because I know that's a lot of your clients as well. Um, are you anticipating that they're going to be able to grow given the macro environment, given the challenges ahead for them, the energy situation? I mean, how is it that, that they can be boosted and supported a little bit better? I think small and medium enterprises in most countries are extraordinarily resilient. And something that's very difficult to forecast or measure is just how well many of them have adapted to the energy shortages that we currently see. And certainly if we look at the performance of our lending book into that environment, it continues to be good. We would have expected bad debts to be higher than they currently are. I think the biggest headwind yeah. is the difficulty in starting a new small business in this environment. And that is a headwind to longer term growth. We need to start many, many more new small businesses to boost growth and employment creation over the longer term.